Chapter 52. An, please like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps my motivation to continue writing this story. Chapter 52. Peter didn't sleep for very long, which was a shame because he was still dead exhausted. Either way, the flight was supposed to be short so he reasoned that he could catch up on sleep when they checked into the hotel. Looking down, he saw that Mary Jane was still knocked out cold against his chest. Everything within him softened at the sight of her. She looked so delicate as she slept, her expression relaxed with innocence as she continued her even breathing. He watched her for several minutes, tempted to extend his hand upward to stroke her face but was afraid that the touch would wake her. It was obvious that she was dreaming by the fluttering of her lashes against the tops of her cheeks and he could only wonder at what her dreams consisted of. His heart swelled as he continued to study her. It was almost implausible that she was even here right now, in his arms. The way that life liked to punish him, he couldn't deny that he was in awe of the fact that she was here, safe and unharmed, at least in the permanent sense. And not only that, but she agreed to be his. Butterflies burst out in his stomach as they fluttered all the way up to his heart, which was beating so fast. His face was flushed as his mind started whirring, trying to make sense of all that he was feeling. When it suddenly hit him. Peter was pretty sure that he was fast on his way to falling in love with Mary Jane. That is, if he wasn't already. It was difficult to tell, because he's never been in love before. But all of the signs were already there. His heart was now threatening to pound right out of his chest. His palms perspired profusely underneath his spider gloves. And he couldn't seem to take his eyes off of her. It was clear that he would have to delve deeper into these feelings later on, explore them to see if his theory was actually true, in private, of course. There was no way he could tell Mary Jane the true extent of how he felt for her. At least. Not yet. It was much too soon. He didn't want to scare her away by coming on too fast and strong. They haven't even been on an official first date yet. Sighing contentedly, Peter gently rested his cheek on top of her red hair, smelling the shampoo from her recent shower. Closing his eyes and inhaling the scent, he couldn't help but daydream about what his life would be like with Mary Jane as his girlfriend. Would it be not much different than before? Only with the added benefit that he got to kiss her whenever he wanted? That seemed most ideal to him. She was his best friend and he didn't want anything to change the dynamic of their relationship on that front. She was still his best friend, only it was so much deeper now. He now didn't have to worry about touching her, even in innocent ways, or how it looked for him to want to spend extra quality time with her without having to think up a valid reason for it. Now that he knew that she felt the same way, he could take liberties that he could only ever dream of before, which was so crazy that it left him almost dumbstruck. To think that he wouldn't have to make up any excuses just to see her, that his desire to be in close proximity with her was enough reason now that they were dating? It was an amazing sense of relief because he honestly wanted to be close to her side nearly always, the tenuous anxiety he felt when she was away was too much to bear at times. Especially now after this whole ordeal of her having been kidnapped. He didn't think that he could leave her on her own for extended periods at a time, so it was nice to realize that the lack of excuses needed just to see her wasn't necessary. Especially if they got to spend that time together having a good time like they normally did in each other's presence. Depending on his financial situation when they returned to the States would depend on how quickly he could take her out on that first date of them as an official couple. He knew that May was working on regaining their life savings, and he hoped that she would be successful by the time he returned to New York. Not only could they then afford their normal luxuries, but they could also move back to Queens, and he would be that much closer to MJ. And then, they could get to the actual dating part of their relationship where Peter would be able to properly afford treating her out like she deserved. It was now summer again, whereas before the dusting, it had been fall, so his original plan to take her to an apple orchard upstate was now out. Perhaps he could take her to Coney Island? Surely they would have repaired the damage caused from his fight with the vulture since it's been over five years, right? They could start the day out at the beach, where maybe Peter could see an appearance of that green bikini she sported in her Instagram photo, only he'd be lucky enough to see it in person this time. And perhaps she wouldn't see right through him and would let him apply sunscreen to her back, allowing him to touch all of that exposed skin. She was a redhead, after all, and needed the SPF protection from the sun. Peter could easily convince himself that it was all for her well-being and not for more lewd motivations on his part. Then, as the day passed, they could make their way over to the boardwalk and the amusement park. 
Peter would have no trouble playing those carnival games and could easily win Mary Jane a stuffed animal with his spider powers. They could share cotton candy as well as any assortment of fried fair food. And they could go on all of the rides but end up on the Ferris wheel at night, when all of the bright lights from the park were shining bright below. Where they could make out as the big wheel spun around in a circle. His imagination went wild with the idea. Where, in his mind's eye, while kissing her, he would be bold enough to cop a feel when they stopped at the very top of the Ferris wheel, something that he knew he could never do in real life but it was still fun to imagine now that it could actually become a reality someday. Whereas before they got together, it had been nothing but a silly fantasy that had no hope of coming true. His dick lurched in his spider suit at the thought of touching her boobs for the first time. Would they feel heavy in the palms of his hands? Soft? Firm? Either way, he already knew that it would be an intense experience for him, if he was judging by how acutely heightened his senses were at times. Especially with new experiences, he found himself overwhelmed by them at times. Though he had a feeling that any new encounters he had with Mary Jane would be the good sort of overwhelmed. He opened his eyes and peeked down at her chest, his cheeks burning. She was still wearing his large sweatshirt, but even through the thick fabric, he could see the swell of her breasts as they shifted up and down with the movement of her every breath. The heat reached his neck and he forced himself to look away, instead staring intently up at the curve of the airplane ceiling. What was wrong with him? Here, Mary Jane had just survived a traumatic experience and he was busy thinking about her boobs. Like he was some sort of horny creep. Still, he couldn't shake the thoughts out of his head as he imagined against his will what she looked like naked. Or, wondering what she would taste like. Down there. He shivered and felt his cock start to stiffen and strain against the tight spandex of his suit. His head fell back against the settee, away from where it previously rested against her hair. Well, if he was unsure that he was in love with her, he at least knew that he lusted after Mary Jane, that's for certain. Though he had a sneaking suspicion that both cases happened to be true. Love and lust. What a fine line they happened to be. He sighed and said about trying to think about other things to will his boner down, knowing that it was something he would have to accomplish before they landed or before Mary Jane woke up, which could be at any moment that her body chose. It would be mortifying for her to find him in this state, especially when they had more pressing concerns they had to deal with. His mind filtered through numerous unpleasant thoughts, though they were difficult to concentrate on when the girl in question, who had caused all of this just by her mere presence, was currently laying flesh against him. He closed his eyes and furthered his efforts. Mark Watson screaming at him, his voice indicating that Peter was slacking. Nick Fury being infuriating while trying to control him. Hammerhead's ugly mug of a face. Peter frowned as none seemed to be working. He had to up the ante. Flash prancing around in nothing but a speedo. Annabelle Watson with a long, curly mustache that reached to her shoulders. Harry going into gruesome detail about a gross medical diagnosis that had to do with his infrequent bowel movements. Mary Jane getting recaptured by Lincoln. His eyes snapped open as the unexpected thought popped into his mind, effectively killing his erection just at the horrible idea it presented. He shivered at the feeling of unease that suddenly spread through him. Actively, he reminded himself that Mary Jane was safe. And that he would deal with Lincoln when they returned to New York. No one would dare bother Mary Jane again, he would make sure of it. Still, the thought had been effective in killing what had been caused by his randy musings. And he kicked himself for being so inappropriate at such an inopportune time. He needed distraction. Something to keep his mind occupied away from the feeling of her curves resting against him. Swallowing, a thought struck and he looked down to see the outline of his phone in the front sweatshirt pocket that Mary Jane wore. She had forgotten to give it back. Shifting his hand down, he carefully extracted it from the loose pocket as he did his best not to disturb her. He would have to wait to call May and Ned until his voice wouldn't wake Mary Jane. But perhaps it was time for him to catch up on what was happening in the world, and more importantly, his friends. After sending a quick text to May, telling her that he would call her later, Peter opened his phone to the main screen and scrolled over to the Instagram icon, pressing on it to enter the app. What immediately caught his eye was that he had numerous messages that had been unopened in his DMs. He quirked a brow. That was a bit unusual. It was rare for him to get any DMs, especially so many. He tapped on the mailbox symbol and saw that the most recent message was from Michelle. Michelle, hey doofus. People are starting to get really worried. Send an SOS if you need assistance. Peter's brows furrowed at that, 
more than a little confused but quickly moved on, knowing that he would have to address her message later after he found out a bit more context. He clicked on the next message. Betty, Peter, I have plenty of resources available if you need any help. I just got an internship at the Daily Bugle and their database can help me to track any information that you need. Just please, make sure to reach out. We are all here for you. Blinking at the screen, Peter could only describe himself to be flabbergasted. Resources? Tracking information? What in the hell? Sensing a theme with the messages, Peter quickly clicked on the next one. Flash, hey man. I know I'm probably the last person you expected to hear from, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm sorry to hear what's happened. Let me know if you need any help, I'll be there in a snap. Flash, sorry. Too soon for any snap comments, huh? What in the actual fuck was going on? Why was everyone reaching out? It was almost as if. His thoughts cut off as the blood drained from his face, leaving it ghostly white. Did someone die? Thoughts of May flitted through his mind as panic seized him. He couldn't go through that again, not with what just happened with. He shuddered, unable to even think the name of his mentor as he forcibly shifted his thoughts. Tampering down his panic work because before he could work himself up too much, he got to Ned's message. Ned, Peter. I'm so so sorry. I've been trying to get a hold of you but I realized that I didn't have your new number. I panicked. I tried to do as you asked to give an excuse to Harry but I somehow let it slip that Mary Jane was missing and that you went away to look for her. Ned, now he's all panicked and shit. I can't get him to calm down. He wants to try and help you. Relief at reading this was like dipping his head into cool water. He closed his eyes for a moment and just breathed, willing his heart to slow down its rapid pace. No one died. His Aunt May was safe. Yes, the news Ned gave wasn't good news, but it was bounced better than what he had been anticipating. He could handle Harry just wanting to be a good friend by lending assistance. Compared to most of the things he's had to deal with recently, dealing with Harry would be a piece of cake. His eyes strayed down to the next message below from Ned that was from a few hours ago. Ned, Peter, it's been days. I know that you're busy, but Harry's told everyone that he thinks that you might be missing now too. I'm starting to worry about that myself. Please let me know that you're okay. Guilt stabbed at his chest as his stomach dropped. How could he quit disappointing or worrying his loved ones? It seemed impossible to stop. Immediately, Peter set out to type a response to Ned. Peter, hey Ned, I'm fine. I just found MJ and we're currently flying to Prague. I'll tell you more when I have the chance to call you. So much has happened. Thanks for the warning on Harry. I'll deal with him. Peter, also, my new number is 555-234-1652. Peter sighed then and let his head fall back on the support of the couch, nearly groaning aloud. It wasn't a raging fire that he had to put out, but it was a fire nonetheless. And he was so tired. He felt terrible that he had caused his friends so much panic. He truly didn't mean to ghost their messages, it was just that he had been so hyper-focused on finding Mary Jane and fighting against Fury's veiled threats that he hadn't even bothered to check his social media platforms. Lifting his head again, Peter thought it best to just deal with it and move on. No reason to dwell on what's already been done by stressing out about it. It was kinda like ripping off a band-aid rather than lingering on any potential unfortunate circumstances. He'd just deal with those as they came along. Clicking on the final messages just below Ned's, Peter trudged forward with trepidation on what his newest best friend had to say. Harry, Peter, just say the word and I'll fly over to wherever you are to help search for MJ. My dad has been letting me have whatever I want now that I've come back from the dead, so we would have a lot of resources at our disposal. I can hire an entire team of private investigators and we can work together. Just please tell me where you are. A day passed after that first message before Harry had sent another one. Harry, Peter, I'm seriously getting worried here. Please let me know you're okay. And finally, the latest one was sent four hours ago. Harry, if I don't hear from you soon, I'll expect that you've been kidnapped too. And I'll send those PIS to scour all of Europe for you and MJ. I'm seriously freaking out right now. Peter sighed as he tried his best to swallow down his guilt. Would there ever be a time in his life where he wouldn't be letting down at least one person in his life? It always seemed like no matter what he did, it was never enough, that he was expected to always attempt to split his focus in at least 10 different ways while still trying to remain successful as a hero. 
The prospect was daunting. And it made him feel like he would fail no matter what he did, so why even bother trying? The word responsibility echoed in his brain and Peter closed his eyes, suddenly so much more tired than he was previously, if that were even possible. Releasing a heavy breath, Peter looked down at the screen of the phone that he had in hand, knowing he had to respond right away before Harry involved himself in something that was beyond him. If Peter didn't talk him down, then Harry could actually be successful in tracking Peter down and learn the truth about his identity. No. That couldn't happen. Not only could Peter lose Harry's friendship over it, Harry's dislike of Spider-Man was still an evident factor, but it would be dangerous for Harry to get involved. But what could Peter say to dissuade him? Peter would have to relay some of the truth, all while playing it off as though it wasn't a big crisis anymore. Sighing, he set out to doing just that, his thumbs typing on the keyboard. Peter, Harry, I'm so sorry. I'm only just seeing these messages. I've been so busy that I wasn't even thinking about social media. Peter, if you've already assembled them, you can call off your dogs. I found MJ. She's safe, but a bit hurt. She has some scrapes and bruises. And she also needs to recover some of the muscle density in her legs. But she's already on the road to recovery. Peter, she's sleeping right now but I'll call you when she wakes up. It will be nice for her to hear another friendly voice. Satisfied with that, Peter rested his head back on the couch and closed his eyes. But was surprised when not even a minute later, he heard a ding coming from his phone. He raised the screen to his gaze and his eyes widened to see that Harry had already sent him another message. Wow. He must have been really worried to be waiting on any word from Peter. Harry could be stubbornly persistent and was a really good friend, better than Peter deserved at times. Harry, Pete, you have no idea how relieved I am to hear from you. And to hear that you found MJ. Maybe I'll be able to sleep for the first time in days. But say the word, Pete, and I can send a private jet to come and get you guys. I can also have my family physician look over MJ. He is one of the best in the country and would take excellent care of her in her recovery. Crap. He really was persistent, wasn't he? How could he play this off? It took him a while to think of an appropriate response. Peter, that's so nice to offer, Harry. I really appreciate it. But here's the thing. Mary Jane was a bit traumatized by the ordeal and asked me if we could go explore Europe together to help her to heal from what's happened. Gosh, he really hated lying. He hated even more that he was getting better at it. Harry, shouldn't she be seeing a therapist for that? Hatred for himself swelled in his chest for a few moments. God, he really wished that Mary Jane could see a therapist but there was no one that she could possibly open up to in order to tell the whole truth to, and a lot of what happened centered around Spider-Man. Including being the main reason why she got kidnapped in the first place for her information about him. The thought still made him sick. But it was dangerous for her to voluntarily let people know that she knew Spider-Man, which would mean that if she did go to therapy, she would have to leave out a lot of the truth. And would it even be helpful to her recovery if they couldn't get to the root issue of what plagued her? If she couldn't be 100% transparent? If she wanted the help, he desperately wanted to get it for her. Denying her of a professional to talk to made him want to keel over and die from how much of a prick it made him feel. Perhaps he could ask around for a therapist once they got back to New York? Maybe Dr. Strange knew someone trustworthy for Mary Jane from his past experience as a physician? Surgeons had connections like that, right? Peter, I don't really want to go against what she thinks is best for her right now. But I'm sure that she'll be seeing someone once we get back to the States and when she is ready. For now she wants to try and forget what's happened for a little while at least. It was then that he felt the plane begin its descent and the fastened seatbelt sign came on again. Peter, I've got to go, Harry. I promise that I'll call you soon. Can you send me your new phone number? He didn't wait for a response as he pressed the power button on the side of the phone to power it down just as the captain came on the speaker to say that they were preparing to land and to turn all electronic devices onto airplane mode. It was as the jostling plane landed, where Mary Jane didn't even stir when the jolt of the aircraft's wheels collided with the asphalt below. She still didn't wake when Fury came out from the back room and waited for Peter to gently lift Mary Jane in his arms and grab his suitcase before escorting them to an awaiting car outside. And she was still deeply asleep by the time Peter checked into the pre-booked hotel and opened the door to their room. It was a suite and the bed was a massive king size, but Peter still delicately placed her down on the center of the mattress before he stepped back, 
staring at her prone form for a moment, both admiring her gentle beauty and assessing if she was all right for him to step away into the bathroom for a bit. He deemed it fine as she continued her even breathing, unaware of the real world as she persisted in her dreams. Stepping into the bathroom with his suitcase, Peter peeled off his spider suit before taking a much-needed shower, making sure to keep an ear open just in case Mary Jane woke to the empty and strange room. But as he shut off the shower he had yet to hear anything. Sighing in relief that she seemed to be getting some real rest, Peter dried his body and changed into a pair of briefs, shorts and a baggy t-shirt that had the words I make bad science puns periodically printed boldly across the chest. When Peter entered the room again, his hair still wet and his face flushed from the steam of the shower, he looked to the bed to find that Mary Jane hadn't moved a single inch. A tension in his chest relaxed at the sight of her and he sighed longingly as his arms ached to hold her. But he instead forced himself to make his way to the lounge couch at the foot of the bed, where he immediately succumbed to slumber as soon as his body relaxed into the cushions. It was to the sound of a sharp gasp that came from another part of the room that jolted Peter awake. Peter? A frantic and rasping voice called out to the room at large, instantly sending his natural response into a fit of frenzied haywire. Not even a second of time passed since she called out his name before Peter shot up to his feet, flipping off the couch as his body crouched low in defensive mode, ready to fight any threat that dared to come after her. His mind was delirious even as his senses automatically looked for danger, his brain not quite fully awake even with his body on autopilot. What is it? He asked wildly as his head whipped around in all sorts of directions in the darkness of the room, but he didn't see anything. From the alarm sound of her voice as she had called out to him, Peter had expected to see a strange man in the room at the very least. But there were no shadows of faceless forms in the dark room and his spider sense was quiet. Still, he kept his body on high alert, aware that there had been a definite panic in her voice that he wanted to take seriously. What's wrong? There was a small hiccup that came from the bed that caused for Peter's attention to divert there. He could see her form there, sitting up in bed, looking at him, though her expression was difficult to pinpoint as his eyes worked on adjusting to the darkness. She looked so small huddled in the middle of such a large bed. He ached to go to her, reach out to her. When she spoke next, there were tears in her voice. I'm sorry, I didn't know where you were, I she cut herself off with a shaky breath and Peter melted straightening his defensive stance as he relaxed his body in her presence. There was no threat. Mary Jane merely woke up and thought that she was alone. I thought that you left. Oh or that I just dreamed everything. Peter was shaking his head, though she probably couldn't see the movement in the darkness. No, MJ. I'm right here. There was a sniffle that came from her, and a hand came up to wipe at her eyes. His heart tightened, hating the fact that she had been distressed enough to cry. Can. Can you come here? And hold me? Peter didn't even hesitate, though he probably should have. He promised that he would stay on the couch. But it was an easy promise to break when Mary Jane was clearly agonizing with a deep level of stress and unease. He couldn't stand to see her in such turmoil if he could help it, and as it turned out, his mere presence was one of the things that managed to placate her now, a duty that hardly twisted his arm in performing as he was just as much in need of her presence as she was of his. Once he helped to calm her down, enough to coax her back to sleep, he could always sneak back to the couch once slumber claimed her once more. Though there was a definite temptation for him to rebel against this idea and just spend the entire rest of the night in the bed, holding her, but he would somehow find the strength to resist. To grant her the respect that she deserved. Turning back the covers, Peter climbed into bed next to her where Mary Jane immediately shuffled closer to his form before he even had the chance to fully lay down. Her warmth latched onto him with such force that he nearly sighed in contentment over the feeling. The heat of her body was nice, and every place that her skin touched his was divine, sending his nerve endings aflame as his mind mulled over different fantasies of him exploring every inch of that smooth skin. He once thought that there could be awkwardness between them in the first moments of their relationship, where they tried their best to get used to the foreign feelings of being able to touch one another so liberally. But there was no such awkwardness, at least not when the touches came in the form of comfort. All of it felt completely natural. Like coming home. Or similar to the sensation of being able to drink a glass of cold water after being on the brink of dying of thirst. He wrapped his arms around her waist, his thumbs rubbing circles on her lower back as he did his best to soothe her. Are you okay? Peter whispered toward the ceiling, afraid to break the silence but needing the reassurance that she was all right, 
just in case there was something more that he could do for her if that weren't the case. Her head shifted against him where it rested on his chest, nodding, better now. I had a nightmare. Peter suspected as much but he hadn't wanted to assume. Or pry for that matter. Still, he couldn't help but suggest in a voice that was just above a whisper, do you want to talk about it? She shook her head, turning her nose inward a little so that it pressed against his pectoral, hiding slightly. Not right now. I want to push it all out of my mind completely. A moment of lingering silence followed as Peter left her to her thoughts, letting her gain a bit of composure as he did his best to comfort her without words, his fingers trailing lightly up and down against the bones of her spine. Until finally, she broke the quiet of the room. Can we talk about something else? Distraction. That was what she had been requesting of him lately and he was willing to grant it to her. Eventually, she would have to face everything. It wasn't healthy for her to continually run away from her demons rather than facing them, overcoming them. But he would let her come to terms with that when she was ready. Until then, he would be there for her in any way, shape or form that she needed him to be. Because as he thought previously, he wanted to be a firm rock that she knew that she could stand upon, one that would never crumble below her feet. Reliable. Sturdy. Strong. But in order to be that for her, he had to support her in all things. And if she needed him to distract her, he was more than willing to supply that demand. Like what? He asked. There was a moment of hesitation on her part before she sighed and seemed to force herself to speak onward, I feel bad. Peter started at this unexpectednesses but she continued on before he could interject with his confusion on her statement. You've revealed so many of your secrets to me so far that I feel like I should do the same. I don't want there to be any secrets between us anymore. Peter's brows arched measurably as she spoke, shock painting his entire outlook as he was left in a state of trepidatious consternation. He could only wonder at what it was that she had been keeping hidden from him, enough for her to feel bad from not telling him until now. His memory strained as he tried to shift through all of their interactions through a different lens, trying to pinpoint any occasion where she would have been concealing something from him, but he came up blank. She had always seemed like such an open book to him, her bubbly countenance free for all to observe. Did she lie to him about something? If that was the case, without even knowing what the lie was, Peter knew that he would immediately forgive her as soon as she confessed it. To be angry with her about a lie was like the pot calling the kettle black. He spun a huge web of lies that surrounded her since the very beginning, only some of which have been revealed so far. There were still so many revealing conversations to be had, after all. Now coming to terms with that, all that was left behind was a level of curiosity on what it was that she felt she had to say to him. No matter what it was, he was determined that there would be no anger on his part, that was for certain. All that he knew now was that she had managed to pique his inquisitive nature, so he really couldn't help himself from asking, you have a secret? Mary Jane nodded against him and then hesitated. If only Peter could prove to her how little she had to fear about his reactions when it came to her. He knew her character well enough at this point that whatever it was that she had to tell him wasn't something that would go against his moral code. He highly doubted that Mary Jane was about to admit to a murder or even a petty crime. But beyond that, Peter was pretty sure that he would be willing to forgive her of a lot without extending the same courtesy to many others that he knew, he was biased towards her, after all, Peter was fully aware of that and didn't care in the least to change it. He was jolted out of his silent contemplation when she inhaled a shaky breath and Peter prepared himself to hear her confession, whether it be damning or otherwise. Peter. I knew. Confusion still plagued him as he tried to grasp her meaning. Knew what? Your secret, she whispered against his chest, her hand subconsciously nodding at the fabric of his loose t-shirt, holding onto him tightly. I knew that you were Spider-Man. The entirety of his being froze. And for a moment, the room became hazy as it spun in his swirling vision, his world tilted on its axis. Comprehension was beyond him, and his mouth formed words before his mind could even grasp them. Wow! how? All this time. She knew? His memory strained over the events of their history together, and he couldn't recall a single instance where she could have discovered his secret identity before he revealed it to her in Venice. Well, except for the night that they met and he had amnesia, but he highly doubted that she peeked beneath his mask after he had passed out in her aunt's guest room. For one, she would have acted a lot differently if she already knew his secret by the time she met him as Peter. And second, 
she wouldn't have gone to the lengths that she had to try and reconnect with Spider-Man, including facing down a bomb in a ballroom amongst New York's elite. So. How? It must have been him. He had to have been the one to slip on his secret. Guilt, confusion, and self-disgust swirled together in a cesspool of angst deep within his mind. Peter really thought that ever since the vulture, he had been extra careful regarding his secret identity. But he has been apparently deluding himself. What kind of hero was he if he couldn't keep Mary Jane safe by proxy of her knowing the truth? Who else knew his secret that he was unaware of? Had he been careless enough for Harry to find out? Or Flash? Heaven forbid if any of his enemies knew. With a jolt, Peter suddenly recalled that Flint Marco had somehow found out that beneath the mask lies Peter Parker. How had he found out? How had Mary Jane, for that matter? Was Peter seriously that much of a fuck-up? Could he do anything right? Apparently not. Because he couldn't even keep his most important secret under wraps. Before you say anything, it wasn't your fault, Mary Jane rushed to console. She must have felt the rising tension in his body as he stressed over the unknown details. I just happened to catch you at a time where everything was suddenly revealed to me. And let me just say, that I was shocked when I found out. And as for how I found out. It was at Harry's party. Harry's party? She somehow found out about his web affliction while they were dancing together in Harry's living room? Had Peter said something in particular that gave it away? Joked about something that only she and Spider-Man had been privy to? Or, had it been after he found her outside, sitting on the fire truck getting oxygen or suffering from smoke inhalation? W-N? How? I, he broke off at the sound of her drawn out sigh. By the sound of it, Peter could tell that she was dreading having to tell him all of the details. But why? We went to the party together, Peter. Did you think that I wouldn't have noticed that my date never made it out of the burning building? When I couldn't find you outside, I panicked. I thought that maybe you were still trapped inside, so. I sorta. She swallowed heavily, her hand tightening on the fabric of his shirt even further, went back in. Peter was gaping at her in the darkness. Everything that she was describing was his worst fear. That she would deliberately put herself into danger for him. He always thought that she would have done so in order to cross paths with Spider-Man again, but in this instance, she ran headlong into danger for Peter. How backwards from his original perception was that? No. Why you didn't? Mary Jane. That was so dangerous. There was the briefest of pauses before the sound of her releasing her breath made its way to his ears. I know. But I didn't know if you were safe and I couldn't just stand by and let you die, she seemed to shudder against him at the thought, at the time, all that I could think was, not Peter. For a moment, Peter was stunned into silence. But you obviously didn't find me, he finally managed to point out, equally pleased at yet another sign of how much she seemed to care for him even back then, and horrified by the extent that she was willing to go in harm's way for him. No. I didn't, she admitted, her face turning downward so that he had no way of seeing her expression even in the darkness. I was crawling on my hands and knees to better get out of the smoke. And when I made it back to the entertainment room and peeked around the corner, I was shocked to find Spider-Man fighting my dad and Sandman. I would have turned around right then but you were still missing. Peter groaned painfully, already guessing as to what she did next but wanting to deny it all the same. You didn't. Unable to refute the truth now, Mary Jane nodded against him. I did. When I saw the opportunity, I first ran and hid behind the couch, she began to explain, much to Peter's growing anxiety, even if it was all in the past and she was obviously fine from the horrific event. That didn't seem to connect in Peter's mind, however, unable to correlate the fact that she was alive and safe as she relayed the occurrence to him. And the longer that he listened to her retelling, the tighter he seemed to hold her against him, never wanting to let her go again for fear that she found herself in the midst of a similar threat. But Mary Jane continued on, unaware of his mounting trepidation. After that, I dove behind the bar. None of you noticed me. I didn't move further than that as I watched you defeat both Sandman and then my dad. She paused and swallowed heavily. Peter himself felt his own throat thicken at the mention of Mark Watson's defeat at Peter's own hand. It was still a tender subject matter, because it was a day that Peter had hurt Mary Jane with the necessity of keeping her safe by his victory over Molten Man. He would never forget how Mary Jane had cried against his shoulder while they sat together on the back of that fire truck, hating that he had been partially responsible for those tears. 
When you stood over him, telling my dad that it was over, do you remember what it was that he did next? Peter started at the question, having been lost in the memory, and it took a second for her words to register in his mind. Yeah. He overused his power, like he blew a fuse or something, Peter mused, seeing it clearly in his mind's eye as he spoke the recollection aloud. But he was defiant enough to have just enough juice to send a small blast at my face. And then you couldn't see because it charred your lenses, Mary Jane interjected, taking over where he left off. Proving with her words that she had been, without a doubt, in that flaming room with them. When you took off your mask then, your back was to me. All I could see was the back of your brown hair and my dad's furious look. That was when you doused him in webbing. Peter nodded along with her words, confirming wordlessly that all that she said aligned with what he recalled happening as well. Though there was a significant mark of confusion in his mind when she said that she hadn't been able to see his face when he had taken his mask off that fateful night. So, how had she learned of his identity then? He tried to push forward his memory, straining against it to try and recall what had happened next, but he came up blank. All that he knew next was that he had woken up outside in Harry's backyard, his spider sense having saved him by directing his unconscious body outdoors. That was all that I remember of the night, Peter mused aloud, now subtly fishing for more information. He knew how he had managed to get out of the burning building by use of his spider sense. But how had Mary Jane escaped? Had she followed the path that his body took to the nearest exit? No. That couldn't be the case because she was nowhere to be seen that night when he woke up alone in the backyard of the Osborne estate. Well. I can fill you in, Mary Jane supplied helpfully as she finally tilted her head upward against his chest so that he could now see the outline of her features. Even in the darkness, she was beautiful. The ceiling actually gave away and fell on top of both you and my dad. I knew that my dad would be fine, able to withstand the heat, but you. You didn't move after that. I was so scared, Peter. I thought that you died. I jumped into action, though. I couldn't watch Spider-Man die right in front of my eyes if I could help it. It took a lingering amount of time for her words to register in his mind, and when they did, he gasped audibly. It was you, Peter exclaimed, nearly sitting upright in his shock but stopping himself in time, lest he appended her form on top of him. You saved me from the fire. His entire outlook of that night pivoted its mark entirely. Everything that he had presumed had been so very wrong. It hadn't been his spider sense that got him out of the fire, but a brave, red-headed girl with more gumption in a single finger than most people contained within their entire body. A warmth hummed in his chest, the feeling of lightness accompanying it. He tried to picture it in his mind's eye, Mary Jane dragging his unconscious dead weight through the expanse of a burning building, and he didn't even bother to attempt to rein in how awestruck he was of her. For the life of me, I couldn't manage to figure out how I got out, Peter breathed aloud, more to himself than her, but Mary Jane answered anyway. Yeah. It was me, Mary Jane confirmed, a stroke of that confidence that he loved about her made itself known in her statement, belaying the Mary Jane that he always knew underneath the fearful exterior she had so recently adopted since her kidnapping. With a start, it suddenly hit Peter how he had been subconsciously underestimating Mary Jane ever since he first met her. She was more than just a beautiful and lively teenage girl, no, Peter could see it so clearly now. Mary Jane was so courageously bold and, frankly, gutsy. She had no qualms in setting out to do what was right, no matter how terrifying the prospect before her was. As if to further his admiration for her, Mary Jane continued to describe the events of her rescue of him from the fire in further detail. There was a chunk of wooden beam on top of you and I found a pole that I jimmied under it in order to lift it off of you. The smoke was too thick to see your face then, but that was the least of my concerns, we both had to get out before the roof caved in on us further. I held you up against my chest and dragged you through the kitchen and out the door to the backyard. We both fell back to the ground as soon as we were clear. You were still unconscious and I needed a moment to catch my breath from all of the smoke. When I finally looked down, I saw your face. That was when I knew then that you were Spider-Man. For an immeasurable amount of time, Peter was struck speechless. It all felt too surreal to be real. The way that she described the events was like something out of a romance novel. How was this his life? When had he gone from dorky Peter Parker to a guy that had somehow won the affections of a girl like Mary Jane Watson? Who was not only gorgeous, witty, and sweet, but someone who had also saved his life on numerous occasions now? How could he not be in awe of her? Wow. 
Yeah. Swallowing thickly against the sudden rush of emotion that coursed over him, Peter blinked rapidly against the sting in his eyes, marveling at the fact that without Mary Jane in his life, he could have ended up dead at least twice by now. But he pushed past the thought, not wanting to linger on it just in case tears actually managed to brim past the line of his eyes. He didn't want her to see him cry in reaction to the swell of emotion that came over him. He would circle back to it when he had more control over his reactive feelings. Instead, his mind shifted as a thought struck him. So, you knew this entire time? Yes. All those days at Del Mar's after school. Mary Jane nearly walking in on him in his spider suit. The movie day in her aunt's apartment. Their walk through the park together where they took their first selfie together. Mary Jane crashing his guy's night hangout in his bedroom. The homecoming dance. And the airport kiss. All of those occurrences, she knew. Throughout every conversation, every wistful glance and flirtatious comment since Harry's disastrous party, Mary Jane knew that he was Spider-Man. Why didn't you ever say anything? Peter asked, cocking his head to the side, genuinely confounded as to why she never gave him any clue that she was privy to his secret. If Peter had known that she knew, he would have asked her to be his girlfriend in a heartbeat, clear in the knowledge that she didn't mind that it was Peter who was beneath the mask, more than didn't mind, actually, but that she actually returned his feelings. If she had only said something. I like to think it was for noble reasons, but in the end, my motivations for keeping it to myself were at a tad bit selfish. Oh? Peter couldn't understand her meaning on that. How was it selfish for her to not say anything regarding her knowledge of his secret? He was eager to hear her reasonings on the matter. Mary Jane paused for a moment, seeming to take a bit of time to steady herself before she gave confirmation to her thoughts. The way that she was preparing herself for her words was like she was gearing up to admit a horrible confession. I wanted you to trust me enough to tell me on your own. I didn't want to force it out of you. Her words from when he found her tied to a chair when rescuing her in Venice came to mind. She had given him a watery smile, tears streaming down her cheeks as she had said, Why you finally trusted me. His heart tightened at the thought, that she had been waiting for him to be brave enough to take the plunge and confess all to her. More than anything, he was glad that he had torn his mask off his face upon discovering her in Italy. No matter if it was subconscious on his part or not, it still showed that he trusted her undoubtedly. At least he managed to get that right. But he was still struck on a word that she said that was ringing through his mind. Mary Jane, that that's far from selfish. She didn't seem to have a response for that, instead she focused on tracing her fingers up and down a small part of his chest. Peter swallowed, feeling the urge for his hand to knot at his hair in nervous habit. It, uh, seems that you're my hero twice over and I didn't even realize it. Peter broke off as he squeezed her lightly by the hold that he had around her waist. Thank you for saving my life that night. All of the tension seemed to melt away from her as she softened in his embrace. Of course. It was the least I could do after all of the times that you saved mine. How had he ever managed to get so lucky? Not only had he found someone that seemed to understand him on a deeper level, but she also accepted all sides of this crazy life of his with ease. Before he met her, he never thought that it would have been possible for someone like her to exist, but here she was. Gratitude for her very existence swelled in his chest, because without Mary Jane Watson in his life, it was a very empty and bleak outlook indeed. You're incredible, you know that right? Peter felt the need to tell her, I just... Wow. Mary Jane gave a breathy laugh. We've moved on to incredible from exceptional? Smirking, Peter replied, it's possible to be both at once. Mary Jane smothered a giggle against his chest. They were quiet for a bit after that. Peter was contemplative as he thought over the events that she described. There were so many varying reactions that he had to her confession that he felt the need to compartmentalize them for further individual inspection. He really should just leave all of his inquiries for a later date, just so that she would fall asleep and get the rest she undoubtedly needed, but there was one question that was burning on the tip of his tongue. And he couldn't keep it in no matter how hard he tried. So. You knew that I was Spider-Man, Peter began, his voice careful as he thought on what the best way to phrase these next words would be. And you obviously didn't care that it was me under the mask. I had a crush on both Spider-Man and you, Peter, she interrupted with the reminder, a concept that was still mind-boggling to him but one that he now accepted nonetheless. Right. Peter drawled, and I now get why you wanted to keep it secret that you knew my identity. 
But why didn't you tell me, Peter, that you had feelings for me like you did with Spider-Man? Mary Jane huffed a laugh, which was bordering on humorless just from the slightly derisive tone. Don't you remember? You rejected me twice. The fingers that had been subconsciously rubbing light circles on her back froze. What? When? There was only one instance that he could think of where Peter had rejected her, and that was a Spider-Man. But even then, it hadn't been an outright rejection. What he had done then was T-Zero ask her for time to think things over before he gave her his decision, but even then he had been grappling with the temptation for the weeks following to show up at her window and tell her that he wanted to give a relationship with her and Spider-Man a try. So what was this second rejection that she was referring to? Peter. There was the slightest hint of amusement in her tone as she shook her head at him, you kept going on and on, referring to me as only a friend. How else was I supposed to take that? I thought that you didn't like me in the romantic sense. There was nothing that could be done except for him to gape at her. When? When you asked me on that date to Harry's party you played it off like you were only asking me because of the dare. And you said you only wanted to go as friends. You also said that you were there for me as a friend to listen about my troubles with my dad, as she talked he could feel all of the color drain from his face as he remember exactly what it was that she was referring to. All of this not even 24 hours after you rejected me as Spider-Man? Of course I read deeply into it. I thought that you were just trying to let me down easy. No. 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 That wasn't the case at all. The only reason why he stressed that he was her friend at the time was because he was trying to get it through his own head that being friends was all that she wanted to be, at least, that was what he had thought at the time. He could see now that in trying to save himself a bit of heartbreak, he actually shot himself in the foot. Now I know that I truly am an idiot. Being only your friend was the last thing that I wanted. To think that they could have been together for a while now and saved themselves so much stress and angst. Yeah. Mary Jane mused, I was really torn up about it later on, thinking that I was rejected by the two different guys that I liked. She cut herself off with a little laugh, but then I remembered how stubborn I can be. I decided to set out and prove you wrong to show you that we were perfect for each other. Peter's mouth dropped open so that it was agape. She tried to prove him wrong? Was that why she had been acting so? Friendly? Had she actually been flirting with him that entire time? He thought that it was just a part of her personality shining through and she treated all guys in the same manner. But now with her confession, that obviously wasn't the case. Damn, he was such a dumbass when it came to girls. So. You crashing my guy's night through the window? Peter ventured with the inquiry, suddenly needing the confirmation that he hadn't imagined her flirtatious behavior that night. Deliberately planned after I realized you weren't free that night to hang out alone, Peter nearly cursed aloud. They could have spent that night together alone? I really was pulling out all the stops and trying to flirt with you that night. Did you notice? Not at first. Like we've already established, I'm an idiot, Mary Jane giggled at that and Peter grinned roguishly down at her, though he doubted that she could see the expression. It wasn't until after you left when Harry and Ned pointed it out to me and forced me to think on it. We came up with a plan for me to ask you to the homecoming dance then. But then you told me that you were leaving the country on the same night as the dance before I had the chance to ask. Sighing, Mary Jane dropped her forehead onto his chest. I was kicking myself when Harry told me that. I thought that I was back to square one when it came to convincing you that we belonged together. At least this was something that he knew with certainty was not the case. I may be an idiot, but not terribly so. By that point, I was willing to risk our friendship just to have you. I was working up the nerve to ask you out on a date once you returned to the States. But I beat you to the punch, didn't I? There was a smirk in her voice full of gratification that Peter couldn't help but grin widely at. It was so good to see her acting a bit like her old self. Peter chuckled. You did. I really wasn't expecting you to kiss me at the airport. I've noticed. You didn't kiss me back. Smile falling, his face colored with heat before he said, I just. I know. I was in shock. But the good kind of shocked. Like if you had stuck around for a few more minutes, I would have wrapped you in my arms and begged you not to get on that plane. There was a lingering silence, until, now I wish you had. Then maybe all of this could have been avoided. Immediate self-loathing colored his every thought at the sound of wistful sadness that weaved throughout her tone. 
He had a feeling that if she chose to not get on the plane that it wouldn't have mattered, a change of location wouldn't have stopped Lincoln from going after her. And it was all Peter's fault. It was only because of her connection with Spider-Man that she had been targeted in the first place. He should have stayed firm in his earlier resolve of staying away from her as Spider-Man. What in the hell had he been thinking by getting close to her while wearing the mask? The answer to that question was that he hadn't been thinking. All that he wanted back then was to get as close to Mary Jane as possible. But he could have found a way to do that as Peter Parker, right? Sure, Mary Jane would have felt rejected by Spider-Man's rebuff, but she would have stayed safe and out of Lincoln's radar. But no. That hadn't been what happened. Peter's selfishness had put Mary Jane in this position. How in the world could she still feel safe being held in his arms knowing that it was Peter's own fault as to why she was kidnapped in the first place? Swallowing against the thick bile that threatened against the thickness of his throat, Peter tried softly, Mary Jane. But it's all in the past, right? Mary Jane interrupted, her voice forcibly chipper as she tried to coerce the both of them to leave the subject behind them. All that matters is that we are together now. It doesn't really matter what road we took to get here, so long as it got to this point, right? Right. Peter responded in a quiet voice, not quite sure that he agreed. He felt that they could have gone without all of the danger that she had been put through in the process of them finding their ways to each other. But he was willing to simply agree with her and let the matter rest, there was nothing that he could do to change the past regardless. Though I am curious. Mary Jane mused in a light-hearted voice, if everything that you described actually happened and I did stay, would you have told me your secret? that you were Spider-Man? Peter took a moment to think on it. Despite how light her tone was, it was a heavy question. She was essentially asking him if he trusted her enough to tell her his secret when not under the duress of a dire circumstance. And he wanted to think about his answer honestly, to give her the sincere truth of it all. Would he have told her? When they had been just hanging out on a random Saturday night or Sunday afternoon, without any threats to force the issue, would he have just outright told her? Yes, Peter finally said, his voice ringing with clarity, I don't think it would have taken me much longer to confess everything to you either if I knew that you felt the same way for me. We've already established that you are more than trustworthy, since day one she had proved that by not unmasking him, the only thing that was hanging me up on telling you that I was Spider-Man much sooner was that. I was afraid that you would be disappointed that it was Peter behind the mask. Mary Jane gave a little snort, breaking through the beginnings of what appeared to be another brooding session on Peter's part. Little did you know that there was no one else better in mind that I could have found out was behind the mask than Peter Parker. I swear, anyone else would have been a bitter disappointment. Peter scoffed, though the flush that had just receded came back with new vigor. You're just saying that. Mary Jane tilted her head upward and he could see just enough through the darkness to detect the defiant glint in her eye. I'm really not. Do I need to give the sexy speech again? Because I totally will. No, Peter laughed as his cheeks burned, I heard it the first time loud and clear. But no matter how much you think so, you'll always be leagues far out of my own. He saw her arch an eyebrow as she rested her chin on his chest, looking up fully at his now. What are you going on about? Wait. Was she serious? Did she not see that she was elevated to such a standard that Peter couldn't even dream of reaching? The only reason why they were together was because Mary Jane condescended herself to stoop down to his level. Mary Jane. Can't you see? You're so stunning. I have a hard time keeping my eyes off of you, because everything about you is just so so captivating. Of course, there is your personality and your liveliness that draws me in, but on top of all of that, the way that your hips move when you walk. Or how you bite your bottom lip. And then there is the way that you speak, or how your eyes spark with these glints, it was also fucking hot that I could barely contain myself at times. And don't even get me start on MPHM. He was cut off by the sudden feel of her lips clashing with his own. Peter jolted, needing a moment to adjust to the sudden change to his senses, all of it overwhelming to how new it still felt to him, before he craned his neck so that he was better able to press his mouth more securely against her own. The glide of their lips together instigated tingles on the nerves of his skin, on every surface that she touched and his participation in the kiss caused for the pace of it to steadily increase in its fervor. Peter clutched her to him, practically pinning her close to him as his hands clenched at the fabric of the sweatshirt that she wore at the base of her back. Of course, there was the temptation to just tear it off of her, so that he could see what lay underneath, but he resisted. Instead, 
He turned them onto their sides as Mary Jane followed his lead willingly, facing one another just as a new desire took hold at the forefront of his mind. Without even thinking, he forged onward without bothering to contemplate or overanalyze for once in his life. His body was running on autopilot now, so tired of holding back when it came to expressing how he felt toward her. With that, his jaw opened and his tongue snaked out to trace against the seal of her mouth. Mary Jane gasped at the feel of it, those perfect, pillowy lips parted with the sound and Peter slowly pushed the tip of the muscle into the willing warmth that awaited him. As his tongue touched with hers for the very first time, she released the most gorgeous and perfect noise into his mouth. She tasted so sweet, like honey. He groaned as his tongue started to stroke against her own inside of her mouth. The most delicious tingles emitted from the touch. Yes, yes, fuck yes. This is what Peter wanted. What he's needed for so very long now, since the moment that he met her despite not even knowing his own identity when he first laid eyes on her gorgeous face. A feeling of complete contentment settled into his chest as Peter and Mary Jane gave and took from one another in equal measure. Mary Jane clung to him, trying to push herself as close as possible to him as he continued to probe the sweet cavern of her mouth, the prettiest moans escaping her as it was drowned out by the eagerness of his own movements. He pulled back as the need for air assaulted them, but Peter merely moved to latch his mouth to the skin of her jawline as they fought for a steady breath. Do you want me to stop? He asked against her skin. No, Peter, please, Mary Jane whispered out into the darkness, her fingers weaving through his hair in an attempt to latch him to her. How was Peter supposed to resist that? Tearing his mouth away from her jaw, Peter's mouth found hers again, her lips open and eager to accept his tongue in her mouth once more. Naturally, they both turned unspokenly so that she now lay on her back as Peter hovered over her. Hell, he was caging in her body with his own, his arms and legs trapping her in like a spider with its prey, acutely feeling the curves of her form everywhere that it was pressed against his. The sensations coursing through his nerves were delicious. He only had the right sound of mind enough to remember to keep his hips tilted away from her glorious figure, so tiny and yet, she fit so beautifully in his arms, fit against him like Mary Jane was made for it. The bulge in his shorts elongated and hardened against the loose material, jutting out obviously as he did his best in trying to make sure that Mary Jane stayed oblivious of his current condition. Still, he kissed her harder, already addicted to the taste of her sweet tenderness, and Mary Jane pushed into it, exerting her own level of force, propelling them to yet another higher level of urgency. Her whole body shuddered against him as her throat released the most perfect, tiniest whimper. His cock jolted. The way that she sounded was better than anything his dreams could have ever conjured up. The way that she tasted was so distinctly sweet that it left him instantly succumb to addiction. And the way that she felt, every movement, every caress, was torturous paradise against his skin, feeling so good but left him wanting so much more. Mary Jane squirmed, trying her best to get closer to him, her hands knotted at the back of his loose shirt, attempting to use her strength in pulling him down so that he was flush against her. All that he had to do was simply lower his hips so that his dick could be pressed against the apex of her thighs. Such a simple action to take but with a consequence of a burdensome decision to make. Still, Mary Jane continued to tug at him, trying to coax him downward. But Peter resisted her. He had to. He was at the brink of his self-control. All of his senses overwhelmed. Instead, he pulled back, detaching their lips with a notable, wet smack and lowered his lips to mouth at her neck, pulling at some of her skin with his teeth all while tasting the salty goodness of the thin layer of sweaty sheen that coated her skin. We need to slow down. Hating that he had to say it as he panted against her skin, his heart threatening to pound right out of his chest. A noise of complaint escaped her just before Peter sucked a bit more of the skin at her neck into his mouth. He could already tell that he was being too rough with her. Her body was not healed enough to the point where they should be doing any of this. He could tell that even with the way that she held him belied more weakness in her muscles than what she would normally exert. In her current state, he could easily hurt her. A mournful sigh then escaped her as she came to her own conclusions. You're right. You need your rest to prepare for your fight with a fire monster in a couple of days. Peter's brows furrowed as he finally lifted himself off of her slightly, hovering over her to better see her face. I was more thinking that you need your rest to recover. Even in the darkness of the room, he could see her roll her eyes. Fine, we both need our rest. We can table this for another time. Heat roiled in his belly at the prospect of another time. Holy fucking hell. It suddenly hit him once again. 
Mary Jane was his girlfriend. And they could essentially make out with one another whenever they pleased now. The freedom of such a notion was staggering, when all the while, it made his cock twitch with eager anticipation for more. Right. Yeah. He was pretty sure that his voice cracked slightly, though he hoped that she didn't really notice as he made to get off of her, intending to make his way back to the couch. He was halfway off of the mattress, when, Peter? Automatically, he paused at the sound of his name. Hmm? Can you I mean, you don't have to. But can you sleep next to me? It took a second of brief deliberation before Peter softened, flashing her a soft and affectionate smile that she couldn't see in the dark. Of course. He settled himself back against the mattress, laying on his back as Mary Jane scooted herself closer to tuck into his side, his arm automatically settled around her waist, like it was the most natural thing in the world. Peter? Yeah, Red? She shivered at the sound of the nickname falling off of his lips, and he could feel her lips form into a smile against his skin. I like kissing you. A smile of his own threatened at his lips. I like kissing you, too. That was the understatement of the century, wasn't it? He didn't simply like kissing Mary Jane. No. He relished in it. Already, he was calculating in his mind when would be the next time that they could be alone to do this again after she had healed a bit more, and perhaps after his fight with the elemental, too. When there would be minimal worries left to plague them and they could just feel. They were quiet for a moment, as Peter's vivid imagination went wild, before, hey, MJ? Hmm? She hummed against him, the vibration of which felt electric against the nerves of his skin. He shivered at the sensation. Thank you for choosing me, he said genuinely, unable to say the unspoken words of also thanking her for lowering herself to his level, knowing that she would fight against those thoughts in the same manner that she fought against his own perception of his self-image. Hmm. Mary Jane mused lightly, a ring of teasing in her voice, aren't you glad that we didn't just leave it up to fate to decide like you wanted? The sputter that dislodged itself from the back of his throat couldn't be held back. Hey now. Fate played its part in it too. It brought the most remarkable girl to my doorstep, declaring that I just won the jackpot, which, of course, I did. Her head snapped up to look at him as she blinked slowly, once, twice, before, wow. That was smooth, tiger. Peter chuckled. Thanks, Red, he beamed under her praise before he ducked his head to peck a light kiss on her forehead, sweet dreams. Turning her head downward to burrow into the side of his neck, she replied in a tired voice, I will now that you're with me. Silence followed that, with Peter not knowing how to respond in a way that didn't come across as cheesy. Her statement had come across as so sincere that he didn't want to minimize that by saying something that didn't also come across as genuine. Staying quiet seemed like the best option as he showed her without words that he felt the same way, with his fingers tracing lightly up and down the back of her arm. Enough time had passed so that Peter felt sure that Mary Jane had slipped into sleep. So he had been surprised when she spoke up again, her voice quiet yet still clear. Peter? Thanks for choosing me too.